Welcome back to Ranks That Stank, where we look at the ECR, otherwise known as Expert Consensus Rankings from Fantasy Pros, and we go position by position telling you where they're absolutely wrong, and where they absolutely stink. Stank. Stonk. Stonks. Stonks, not so much. Stonks down. Stonks up for these quarterbacks. Yes, maybe. Um, who wants? I started last week. I will gladly go again. I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to take the fucking reins. All right, all right, all right. My quarterback, Mac Jones, QB twenty one. Yes. Oh, sorry, I just had something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Mac Jones. He threw for two forty last week. Two touchdowns versus the Bengals, which is a solid defense. He played the uh, Dolphins already in Week One, a long time ago. Uh, twenty one for thirty, two hundred thirteen yards, one touchdown, one interception. Not great. Not not bad either, though. Uh, we've had a lot of time now since that game. This Miami team gives up the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks in all of the NFL. The last three QBs that played Miami, Rodgers went for 238, one touchdown, one interception. Allen went for 304 and a touchdown, and Herbert went for 367 and a touchdown. Yes, I know those three quarterbacks are better than Mac Jones on paper, just in everything, right? But this is a huge game for the Patriots. Must win. If they win this, like you know, this is playoffs. This is this is what they're playing for here. Uh, I just like Mac Jones in this spot. I think he's going to outperform this QB twenty one projection. I think he could end up as a top uh, twelve quarterback this week. Yeah. So just for some context, when we go by these positions, we're taking a quarterback ranked outside of the top twelve that we think can go off. Running backs, we're looking at guys outside the top twenty four that we think will go off, and then inside the top twenty that we think will kind of fall off so we're going in and out of of each of the positions I like Mac Jones a little bit semi-inspiring I'm gonna stay in that division with the most inspiring quarterback in that division it's not Josh Allen don't do it certainly not Teddy Bridgewater okay I thought you were doing it <laughs> I thought you were going no. there for a second too yeah absolutely fucking not this is you guys are framing me again you think I'd do some cringy shit like that first of TikToks now Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> not happening here Mike White he, the guy's just a warrior, and he's got a great matchup against Seattle. If this guy's in the lineup, I'm here for it, as long as he's playing against someone that he can throw the ball against. The, the resurrection of Garrett Wilson will be great. Elijah Moore is there as long as Mike White is ripping. So I'm just a fan of Mike White. He's at quarterback 16 right now, and if he's in my super flex, I'm ecstatic about it. Not going to go into details. Don't need to because we've seen his face all over SportsCenter. Yeah, I love that. That's another team, too. Just has a, a big game must-win scenario. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, I'm going to go with a guy who is ranked as the quarterback 15. I'm running it back with a guy with massive rushing upside, Brock Purdy. Get him. All right, joke didn't hit. That's get, fine. Get him in the comments. Get him. Look, he's elusive. He's quick. Whatever. We're gonna we're gonna let that ship sail. But you could have you could have let that you could have not said anything. I'm back. Maybe, I'm maybe double. People would have forgotten, but now you just brought it back. I don't up. give a fuck. All right. I watch him with my eyes. He looks like he can run the ball. He was close <laughs> to a rushing touchdown last week, and I'm not letting that go. Either way, he's playing against the Raiders this week who give up the 27th most passing yards, 20th most passing touchdowns. They absolutely stink. They rank second to last in turnovers. I don't know how the Raiders are going to stop this offense from staying outside of the red zone. A lot of opportunities for Brock Purdy to get the ball into his playmaker's hands. CMC, Kittle, Ayuk. They're going to eat up this Raiders defense. Question. Yeah. What's that? You said they give up the 20th most? Yes. Is that a lot? No. 20th. I feel like that's on the, right? 20th. I didn't blink most one time. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> that, that one minute. You give up the 20th most. You meant the 12th 20, most. 12th most. Okay. 12th most. 20th. 20th fewest. 20th yeah. few. That's no. better. Are you sure? 20th fewest touchdowns? Yeah. It would be the 10th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tw- okay. Most. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm understanding it now. Yeah, okay. I'll say, I think the 20th isn't good. It makes sense now which, why you think Brock <laughs> you. Purdy is good. His rushing ability, <laughs> he has the 32nd most fewest rushing yards out of right, quarterback. Right, exactly. For sure. Yeah, and also the Raiders playing uh, Jared Stidham this week. So, you know, I, I, I don't think the Raiders offense is going to get a lot going. So, I just think the Niners are going to have a lot of time of possession in this one. Yeah, I can see that. You want to stay with the Raiders for running backs? Because um, I have a guy. You have a guy, too. We could talk about him. Yeah, Josh you, Jacobs you, right you now. steal my fucking guy? Well, we'll talk about him, both of us. You guys you are know. scared. Scared of G- JJ. Well, here's what, I, here's what I have. You know, Josh Jacobs right now is the RB6. He's been amazing. He's been the most broken tackle. Like, he's awesome. But playing the 49ers this week, yes, they could try and lean on him with Stidham starting. because they. I mean, but the reason they're starting Stidham is they don't want to be faith in Derek Carr. 
Derek Carr can hand it off to Josh Jacobs. They probably want to see Stidham throw it a little bit. And I also would expect the Niners to force Stidham to throw it and just stack the box and know that Jacobs, they're going to try and run the ball with Jacobs and they're going to shut him down. Uh, so that's really just why I'm not saying I don't like Josh Jacobs this week. I'm not saying don't start Josh Jacobs this week. I'm just saying temper expectations. 22 for 76 or something. It's very possible. Yeah. But I could easily see him going like 12 for 50. No, no touchdown. They'll give him, I feel like he might have more rushing attempts than Sidham has passing attempts in this one. It's possible. But then I just don't get the point in benching Carr. That, you know. yeah, I, mean, I mean, the benching just, of Carr was a 100% a wave of the white flag. They literally did it so that to, they wanted to avoid injury to Carr because if he gets injured, something about his contract becomes like guaranteed or something. Well, yeah, it's also harder to trade him or whatever. Yeah, I mean, this is this is literally the Raiders giving up on their season. So, you know, maybe they just try to give the ball to Jacobs, get out of there unhurt. Um, but Niners, by far, allow the fewest rushing yards, least amount of yards just on offense. It's been eight straight weeks since any team has been able to get more than 80 rushing yards against them. I just, I, I don't see how the Raiders get any success on offense this week. Yeah, I mean, like you said, just the Niners defense here is what we're we're banking on. I'm I'm worried about um I'm worried about Nick Chubb this week. He's the RB nine. I've been worried about him for a little while. You Since know, the Sean got back, honestly. Yeah, I look at him and he's 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 a friend. I'm like fellow Nick to Nick. You know, let's have a heart to heart here. And he's been under eleven fantasy points in four straight games. Hasn't scored a touchdown in four straight games. Um, and you look at Washington's defense; they've been pretty fucking good. Only allowed seven running back rushing touchdowns on the year, which is the seventh fewest, sixth fewest fantasy points allowed to RBs on the year, fifth fewest overall rushing yards, which is where Nick Chubb obviously eats. They have allowed one single running back this year to top 87 rushing yards on them, and it was Derrick Henry back in week five. It took him 28 carries to do it, and he hit 102 yards. So it's like unless we're expecting Nick Chubb to have 25 carries and get in the end zone, which is, I feel like, not the case here. Nick Chubb, for me, is just like, we have this idea of what Nick Chubb was in the beginning of the year and the way he was scoring touchdowns, like left and right, and just nonstop RB1, week in, week in, week in, week in. Uh, Nick Chubb's not there for me anymore. He had a stretch where he didn't go two weeks without a touchdown. Yeah, and he was scoring multiple touchdowns at a time. And even like, it's, it's not even like Kareem Hunt's getting more involved. It's just Nick Chubb's kind of doing what Nick Chubb has done throughout his career, where it's like, when the game script is right, when it's a good matchup, he kind of dominates, but... It's just not happening right now. Washington's not a good matchup. So at RB9, I, I don't look at him as like a, a rock-solid RB1 whatsoever. Yeah, nothing about this Browns offense gets me excited. No, nah, me either. Deshaun's it looked so fucking messy. It, yeah, I, 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 was, I had Nick Chubb actually on my list, and then I saw that you put him on, so I took him off. But, yeah, I agree with you at everything you said. Nick Chubb. I mean, like, you got like four on your list. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a, lot of, take everybody. there's a lot of guys I like or I don't like. There's a lot of stinky RB, RBs yeah, this, this week. This, this is what happens, too. We see this every single year when we get to the fantasy championships, we get to the playoffs. You just start seeing all the studs that got you there start dwindling down, and then these random guys like Zonovan Knight and whoever come out of nowhere Go. and they end up winning you your uh, fantasy championship. So. This uh, isn't uncommon. Yeah, dude, you know who who is looking low-key like a, a league winner right now? Not a league winner whatsoever, but someone I'm okay putting <laughs> into my lineup. A.J. Dillon, man. He's biting. Yeah. Uh, he's the RB26 right now, so we're going to look at some guys outside the top 24-ish that we think could, could make some solid impacts right now. A.J. Dillon, he's just continue to score touchdowns, like week after week after week. He's scored in four straight games now, five touchdowns in that span. He's also been involved in the passing game. So he's caught multiple passes in four straight games, three targets or more in four straight games. That's what happens. You get the big boys in the small temperatures. A.J. Dillon breaks out. They get Minnesota this week, 10th most fantasy points allowed to the running back. So uh, I'm excited about getting Dillon into my flex spot. I need one more fucking rushing touchdown from him to hit all my season-long props on prize picks. Yeah. I love Dylan this Get week. Get it done! I love Dylan this week. I also, uh, you didn't mention, but uh, Aaron Jones is dealing with a knee and ankle injury that I think is definitely going to lean towards helping Dylan get more carries and more work. So I yeah, think there's I feel a like possibility he's out. Really? Well, exactly. I mean, it's not, it's it's undetermined right now. He, yeah. um, okay. Well, he's highly questionable. I'm going to be honest, yeah. I didn't even really know that going into this, but th if Dylan's an yeah, obvious must start, if he Jones was limited yesterday, he's probably going to have another limited practice today. But I mean, I like he's always limited. He's been limited his whole career. Yeah, but I feel like last week he he had eight total touches. Who they play? Dolphins, right? Yeah, Dolphins. Yeah, mm. he only had eight know. touches total. So like he he must have been banged up enough to the point where he, you know, they felt yeah. comfortable. Yeah, well, Dylan RB twenty six feels like a must start for for me against Minnesota. Yeah, I absolutely love Dylan this week. Another must start. I'm gonna take a guy from your Atlanta Falcons, Tyler Algier, who's on that border of a back end RB two. 
Um, he's going up against Arizona. They're a bottom three team in total points. Top three team? Top three team <laughs> in total points allowed. I'm all over the place. Uh, surprisingly, they haven't let up as many rushing yards as you might think, just based on how bad they look. But 4.6 yards per carry given up, which is 23rd. Uh, coming off a game against Baltimore, Tyler Algier had 18 carries, 74 yards. Five targets, four grabs, 43 yards. Back-to-back weeks of being an RB1. He's you know, just getting the work, dude. He, he's just yeah. getting the they work. Just he's just completely getting it done. phased quarter all out. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a team we know that wants to run the ball. They have a chance of being up in this game against the Colt McCoy-led Arizona Cardinals. So or they faves, could, minus yeah, three and a half. Yeah, exactly. They could get up and just continue to pound the rock as they wish to do. Damn, you know what's crazy? Algiers at... Guess how many rushing yards he has on the year? Uh, let's go with eight hundred twenty. Eight hundred twenty-one. Price is right. I don't. I don't know. It's I eight hundred seventeen. Really? Damn. Woo! Fuck? That's surprising. Like, if he has two good games to finish out the year, he could be a thousand yard rusher. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize he was close to that. Algier, what a fucking hit for the Fox. He's yeah. gonna hit it this week against Arizona. Hey, I mean, it's the, those past three weeks, he's just been getting that volume, man. He's been getting the eighteen carries that you need. He, you know, Cordell Patterson went down. He started getting the extra work too. It's just nice to see a, you know, a rookie actually be for reliable. Into, well, yeah. Look like he could be reliable. I'm not gonna, you know, give it all to Algier right now, but he looks really solid. I'm excited about him for next year too. Yeah, one guy I wanted to throw out real quickly because Algier is kind of on that board. You're probably starting him anyways, but I really like Michael Carter this week. You touched on Mike White. And really? his return, yeah. Ugh. I I just think Bam Knight has been kind of inefficient. I don't know if that's just like back to back tough matchups against uh, Detroit and Jacksonville. He's due. He, he, we could say he's due, but I this, I think this Michael feels Carter, like your call of the week. And my by call, call of the week, week, I don't mean that in a good way. Yeah, like this is your weekly. I mean, look, Mike Tony White said that. Like this is what people are going to be commenting. Yeah, this about. is this, <laughs> this is what everyone's going to clip and comment about. But Dude look. in the Snoopy hoodie said to start <laughs> Michael Carter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fucking clown. <laughs> Whatever. Look, Mike White Idiot. is back. He pa- he dumps it off to his running backs. Michael Carter's obviously the pass catching back there. I don't think this is Bam Knight's backfield like it was during that like month stretch. I think Michael Carter can can take the majority of the work here. I don't know against the Seahawks defense, which is like bottom two. Yeah, listen, I don't respect it, but you're allowed to have the opinion. <laughs> I just find it so disrespectful. <laughs> you come onto the mics and say some shit like that. <laughs> why? When you when you guys have Bam Knight as your no, I, I'll tell you, something? I actually have Zach Moss as my guy who's on the outside oh, here. Oh, we want to be di- talk about disrespectful. But Michael here. Carter had one target last week. He had uh, his carry count. He four, did not have one target last week. Four, five, six. What was last week? Week sixteen or seventeen? Didn't he have? He wasn't he five for four? Four for five? Is that whatever website I'm looking on, maybe it's not updated? Like you should know that. I have a lot of numbers here, all right? <laughs> Don't you dare question my numbers. I'm, I'm questioning all your numbers. Yeah, you probably should. That'd be smart. I'm looking at five targets, five grabs for 44 yards. Okay, that's my apologies. My uh, The website didn't upsa- update for some reason to, to week 16. FF Today has been doing me dirty. I will say two carries for six yards, though. <laughs> like, yeah. Two He's a good pass catching back, carries. though. Sure, whatever. Would it would it really be that big of a surprise if they gave more carries to Michael Carter with how like inefficient Zonovan Knight has been? I mean, up no, from, I'm up not from two in yeah. my starting no. lineup on fantasy championship week. I'm just saying you might be in a pinch. You got to be, might an be in an insane pickle. league to have to start MC. Yeah, you're in a 14 team league or something no. like that. Hell no. Okay, do, <laughs> do, do we want to run this exercise of him or him, Michael Carter, or? No. The other guy. I was going to say that guy, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were trying to cut me off. No, just whoever you were going to say we wanted. Michael Carter or Zach Moss? Zach Moss. Hell no. Moss. I'll tell you why right now. All Zach right. Moss, RB31, playing the Giants, who give up the third most yards to running backs and the 10th most fantasy points to running backs. Jeff Saturday doesn't know what he's doing anymore. He's literally just handing the ball off to Zach Moss because he doesn't have a quarterback that he believes in. Last two weeks, Moss has been getting very solid usage. Look, the last game was a little weird because they were just they had to start throwing. Nick Foles threw three picks, but he had 12 carries for 65 yards, and before that, he was 24 for 81. And this is all since Jonathan Taylor went down. And the thing with Zach Moss is if you had Jonathan Taylor, you probably picked up Zach Moss, and you don't really have anyone else to start. So this is why I think Zach Moss is a decent start. He's just got the usage and the matchup. That's really it, usage and matchup. There's no chance I'm playing anybody on this Colts offense with Nick Foles. 
Yeah, I don't love it, but I'm just saying there's a lot of people that probably are in this situation where they had Jonathan Taylor, they had to pick up Zach Moss, and now they're going, do I start him or do I start like DJ Chark or something? You know, like you know, yeah, Chark for sure. Prob- you know, it's the first dope. guy that popped in my head, but you know what I mean. <laughs> don't disrespect my guy like that. <sighs> Fucking a. Yeah, Zach Moss stinks, but my Carter stinks even worse. Yeah, look, I'm not saying Zach are, Moss are we, is going to be the RB one. I'm putting week. a zero. I'm not starting anyone if I'm in a championship. Do we want to make a one on one bet. Who has more fantasy points this week? Zach Carter Moss or Michael Carter? Yes. I'll take guess. Lunch bet. Yeah, lunch bet. Lunch bet. All right. Hate to see Easy. it. Easy, easy. I'll have cutlets. You want cutlets? Yeah. All right. I want cutlets too. If I win, (laughs) (laughs) it turned to a lunch bed to a cutlet. All right. Well, uh, since it's our weekly uh, slandering of Nick Chubb, uh, there's another guy that I didn't like this week. We are getting rid of this helmet as soon as we possibly can, which will be next week. We will pick a winner for the free giveaway helmet, courtesy of Pristine Auction. If you want to be entered into the raffle, absolutely free. Go over to Pristine Auction. The link is down below. Tony, you will put the link down below in the description Maybe. for people to find it. And uh, when you sign up and you use code BDGE, that will automatically enter you into the raffle absolutely free. What that code will also do is give you $10 towards your first purchase on an auction on the site. And they have every piece of sports memorabilia equipment imaginable on there. Whatever sport you like, whatever athlete you like, jerseys, whatever piece of wall you need to fit you will find something to fit it with your favorite athlete signed on it all right so nick chubb free helmet giveaway courtesy pristine auction click the link use code bdg when you sign up and you're automatically entered into the raffle let's talk about catching hands catching these mitts all right we can talk about catching footballs i'm trying to uh pressure you guys into keeping your segue game sharp yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Let's segue right into the wide receivers. <laughs> We're going to go with the outside here. Drake London, wide receiver 30 uh, currently. Last I see him on both of your guys' lists. Well, that's his fault. I didn't Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that way. I'm just like, I can't wait to hear this bullshit. Drake, Drake London, London, wide receiver 30. Mm-hmm. The last two weeks, he's been Raiders' favorite target. It's not even up for question. It's the only guy he's throwing the ball to, basically. Seven for 96 last week for the Ravens. Seven for 70 versus the Saints. Ever since River, uh, ever since Ritter has gotten the starting role there, he's just been peppering Drake London. Hasn't scored a touchdown with him yet, which this is the week. I'm expecting the same usage, probably getting around another seven receptions, maybe six, seven receptions, probably around the same yardage, but with a touchdown this week. Uh, the Cardinals are a team that's just falling apart. The offense is bad. The uh, defense just lost Buda Baker, their best player. The only thing that was probably keeping that defense together. So I just would expect the Cardinals, uh, they're, they're plummeting right now. The plummet just to, to continue in Drake London will be a, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? A Like a necessity or a fly. benefactor. Drake London will be mm. a benefactor of this a downfall. Beneficiary. A beneficiary of this Cardinals failing defense. Okay. I like that one. I, I don't know. Which, do you think I was going to disagree with that? No, you guys both had him on your list of players you like outside the top 24. Oh, so I was. I forgot I put him on there. I was curious Still to see my guys. what your arguments were for him. But yeah, no, Drake London's been solid as shit. He's honestly, he's been putting up just like Amon Ross St. Brown type lines every single week. 695, 770, 796. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to oh. go with a, a different rookie wide receiver, Jahan Dotson, pivoting off of Drake London. But Dotson's put together three really good weeks. Since week 13, Dotson has ran a route on 100% of the commander's dropbacks while commanding a 20% target share. Pro Football Focus has him ranked as the 11th best wide receiver in that span. With Carson Wentz back, I, I don't kind of like I, it for him. I, I, I like it for him too. Do you guys actually see a real difference between Carson Wentz and Heineke in terms yeah. of like, like they both feel like degenerate turnover? Well, machines Heineke, that, yeah, they're both bad. But Heineke zones in on only Terry. Yes. Wentz yes. will actually at least try to throw to the open guy, but won't do it successfully. Yeah, Wentz has been targeting. I mean, since Dotson. Since week one, Dotson's been, like, solid with Wentz. Yeah, I, I think that Wentz being there makes me a lot more uh, excited about Yeah, Dotson. I'm down on Terry, up on, like, Samuel and Dotson. Yeah, me too. Uh, and Cleveland, they're more of a run funnel defense, but either way, I'm not I'm not, not worried about this Cleveland defense at all. Cleveland defense absolutely yeah. stinks. Jahan Dotson's been a touchdown machine, so like him a lot in the red zone. He's another guy who's kind of bordering on that, like, wide receiver two – range yeah like he, he should Where probably he? be in your lineup as a flex this week he's yeah. just been so hot over the last few weeks scoring touchdowns week in week out speaking about hot i got a deeper sleeper for you okay greg dorch the torch 
coming off a game with 11 targets, I want to say 10 receptions, <sighs> just absolutely integrated back into this offense. Finished as the wide receiver eight last week, 24.4% Is he target the most share. disrespected player in the NFL? Probably. Like from a coaching standpoint? What do you mean? Like how can you be in that locker room? Every single time that dude gets a chance, he's throwing up 10 catches in a fucking 100 yards. And then yeah. Cliff just puts him back on the bench. Cool. Yeah. If, I'm, if I'm in that locker room, I'm 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 fucking I'm I'm putting a Greg Dortch flag it's crazy. up on the He really the, does. The so go like banners. nine for ten, eighty yards, then one for one, one for one, two for three, they just one for on. one, and they then just, nine for ten, ten for eleven. It's still like it's like he's fourth on the depth chart, no matter how well he does. He oh, can that's perform my as like, number one. They're not week? moving him up. Uh, I mean, Rondell Moore's out, so he's back in. The, he's in the slot. I yeah. feel like I started him that week. That, that one time that he, I hate him. I hate Greg Dortch because <laughs> I I tried to get like you're not that, a locker room. I tried to nail that nine for ten week, and I didn't. I got the one for one week. So you're a Cliff guy. Yeah. Fucking sad. Also, the Falcon secondary has allowed the sixth highest yards per reception, so kind of fits into what Dorch does well down the field. A lot yeah, of, I, I lot of slot it. snaps. It's just one of those ones where, like, if you're desperate and you need someone, you can probably throw in Dorch, but, like, I wouldn't. Like, I'm not going to start him over a lot of guys, probably. Start him over Zach Moss? Yes. And no. Flex? You would start Greg Dorch over Zach Moss? If he's if Rondell Moore's out and he's actually going to be on the field, yeah. Okay. I'm starting Dorch over Zach Moss. You're yeah, starting Dorch over yeah. Michael Carter? Uh, probably, yeah. Dorch's upside is just way higher. Yeah, you're talking about a guy getting 11 targets. All right, uh, talk about a guy getting 11 targets last week. That was Alan Lazard against Miami. And they play against Minnesota this week, and the and the big uh, beneficiary of possibly Christian Watson missing this game would be Alan Lazard. Now, we have some splits here. Watson's played, or Lazard has played three games without Christian Watson this year. He's averaged nearly 15 Full PPR fantasy points per game. Almost five catches, .67 touchdowns. So he scores two out of every three games. 7.3 targets, nearly 60 receiving yards. So he's a baller when Watson... He's a baller when forced to be a baller. And we don't know Watson's status right now, but he missed the second half of last (coughs) week's game. I believe he missed practice yesterday. I don't know if he's back at practice yet, but if Watson misses the game and they're playing against Minnesota... Uh, Dobbs is kind of still up in the air returning from the injury. Like his snap counts got up to 55, 60% last week. I'm not sold that he's like a full-time player just yet. And he's still like very erratic with like his route running and just catching and, and dropping random passes. So I feel like Rodgers is coming, you know, they're coming down to the wire where they're, they're fighting for their last couple games. And Rodgers is going to hand the ball off to A.J. Dillon, but also just throw the ball to guys he trusts. Like, he doesn't want interceptions at this time of the year going off Dobbs' fingertips and shit, and he knows Lazard will pull those in. So, at wide receiver 29, if Christian Watson misses time, uh, Lazard's a, a big-time star for me. Yeah, definitely a stud against that terrible Minnesota secondary. We're on the slander side of things Going into now. the inside. Let's slander some motherfuckers. It's my favorite part. I'll rip. DK Dude. Metcalf. Now, really? this, this is uh, probably unconventional wisdom here, but... It's uh, it's just a lot to do with the, the fact that they're playing against the Jets, man. I've I've used this uh, this stat before, but over the last eight weeks, again, the Jets have allowed over eight and a half fantasy points to only Amon Ra, Justin Jefferson, and Stephon Diggs. Eight and a half fantasy points, wide receivers, only those three. And you might say Metcalf's kind of like in that tier. I think you can argue. I think he's a guy that could get there. But this this. Pass defense is just a little bit too scary for me to put him as the wide receiver nine, like a locked in wide receiver one. I think we'll see a fine game where like he's battling with sauce most of the game and he probably gets the best of them once or twice. I don't think it's going to be in the end zone though. So I think he'll make a big player too. probably end up with like four for 75, four for 80. And that's like a decent game, but that's not wide receiver nine overall type upside. So Metcalf, I'm looking at him even with even if Lockett is out, but if Lockett's back, then that's even worse for Metcalf, obviously. But um, I'm a little bit nervous about Metcalf going against the Jets. I, yeah, I mean, it's fair. Jets' secondary is amazing. I, I don't think Lockett ends up playing. He was just doing walkthroughs on Wednesday. So, I, I don't couldn't know. not walk much. Yeah. I, I just feel like there's a high chance Metcalf finds the end zone this one. So, that's why I was kind of surprised that you would fade him. I Lockett. have uh, I have a couple guys I'm, I'm trying to fade here. One of them is Jalen Waddle. Kind of like what you were going. It's it's a tough matchup against the Patriots. Also, no Tua. Mm-hmm. He wasn't horrible with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy came into that Cincinnati game in which Waddle got five targets, two catches, 39 yards. And he started two weeks later versus the Vikings, right? Right. And there was the middle game with Skylar Thompson, which we could probably throw out because Skylar Thompson is one of the worst. Either way, just the combination of the Pats defense with no Tua 
makes me very nervous and hesitant about Jalen Waddle. Uh, I know you have Tyreek Hill as one of your guys that you're slandering. I actually don't feel as bad about Tyreek. I feel like Tyreek kind of gets his either way. It, I feel like it's Waddle who mo- takes more of a back seat, and I feel like it's his production that gets hurt more. I kind of feel – I don't know, dude. I feel like both of them are – I don't want to say like QB proof because obviously like a Skylar Thompson is going to fuck shit up for everybody. But my, I, their offense I feel like is just so revolved around short – intermediate passes that you don't need to be like that good of a quarterback to make shit happen for them. Like every play is just like a five, uh, a 15 yard slant play. So I'm not really, I don't know. Like I, Waddle and Hill just feel like matchup proof quarterback proof for me. Yeah. Uh, so like I have Tyree kill as my, uh, it's not a fade. It's more of a, just be weary, you know, be weary of Tyree kill 12 for 177 last game with Teddy seems awesome. I mean, those are, those are big numbers played the Vikings, Terrible defense, and that was a revenge game for Teddy. Let's not forget that, so that definitely helps. Uh, no touchdowns, but I still think he finishes as a wide receiver one this week. I think Tyreek Hill is going to end up with somewhere around the 10 to 12-point range, no touchdown, and just have a disappointing week. You're playing against the Patriots, who uh, Bill likes to shut down wide receivers. Even when they had Tua, Tyreek only had 15 fantasy points that week, week one against them when they played. Uh, 14, actually, sorry. 14 fantasy points. So that's kind of where I figure he'll finish right around there again. And I'm just looking at the numbers from uh, Patriots defense versus wide receivers. And not a lot of wide receivers have success against them. Like Stefan Diggs went for 18. Uh, you know, last week you had T. Higgins and Trent Irwin have some big games. But, you know, that's, you know, late in the season now. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Overall, throughout the season, they've been very solid. And when you got a backup quarterback like Teddy Bridgewater throwing the ball, I just think it opens up uh, opportunities for that defense and it's going to take away from Tyreek Hill. I think it's insane to fade these two guys at this not point. Fa- you start Tyreek Hill. I'm just yeah, saying. I, mean, I can't believe you're benching Tyreek Hill. <laughs> yeah, you're playing him either way. Yeah, you're playing I'm just, him. I'm tempering expectations. Exactly. I just want to let you know, you know, you know, there's a good chance he doesn't go for 25 points this week. Maybe even 20. He might not even get 15. These two fucking clown shows. Might, might not even get 15 points. But I got more guys I, I kind of want to slander, if that's Go all right. for it. Just, just slander yourself at this point. Yeah. All right. What about? <laughs> uh, at this point, it's just court. Yeah, it's just court evidence. Whatever. I also put Mike Williams as a guy that I'm getting bad vibes from. Last two weeks against Indianapolis, against Tennessee, weaker defenses, only finished with 9 and 10 half-point PPR points. Uh, I don't think the Rams' defense is all that bad. The last three weeks, they're only allowing an average of 187 passing yards per game. They're not facing a gauntlet of quarterbacks. You know, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr. But I feel like Justin Herbert's play's been kind of down. Chargers have still been winning, so that's, you know, good for them. But I I just don't think Herbert has providing is providing the production to feed Keenan to get Austin Eckler his work through the air, you know, around the line of scrimmage, and then also feeding Mike Williams. It feels like he's taking a little bit of a back seat. So Mike Williams makes me nervous at like wide receiver seventeen. And then I, think I would uh, disagree there. You would disagree with that too? Yeah. Yeah, if, if we're talking, like, players on the Chargers I don't like, I would lean towards Austin Eckler just because he had, like, the little knee injury or whatever that happened towards... Uh, well, I think it's just, like, Eckler's taking all the goal line scores. So, Mike Williams isn't, like, scoring a lot of touchdowns, but I feel like his product Since Allen and Williams are on the field together, like, Herbert's ripped off 274 and 3, 282, 335, 1, 367, 1, 313. Two, last week was a bad week, two, 235, but I think that's, like, the only kind of, like, recency bias. I feel like Herbert's been slinging, but all the touchdowns keep going to Eckler, like on the one yard line. I think if one or two of those go to one of the wide receivers, we're going to have fucking monster games. Maybe it it does feel like Mike Williams is making the most out of the targets he's getting, but just makes me nervous. You're also, scared. you're scared of Big Mike. He's a scary yeah. guy. I get it. Another Big Mike, Mike Evans. We have to slander him because he fucking sucks. He's the worst. Uh, he's the easiest auto fade of all time. So just what's he ranked this week? Like nineteenth, twentieth. 20th. Love that. <laughs> he just keeps getting put there and never produces never hits like the, it. Never hits that projection. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait for him to get 1,000 yards again this season, though. All right. The tight end position, the best position in fantasy football. It's the one you've all been waiting for. I'll start us off with Cole Komet, tight end 14. It's disrespectful that this man is out of the top 12 for tight ends. Look at, look at his targets the last three games. Six targets, five targets, seven targets. Let's go with the catches. Five catches, four catches, six catches. You know what that, that math is? It means he's only dropped one ball or not caught one of those targets in those last three games. Look, he's a tight end, so he's getting five targets a week. That's that's awesome if you're a tight end. That's what you want from your tight end. 
Uh, yeah, you want some yards too, and you want some touchdowns. But in this day and age, you can't guarantee stuff like that. You can't even expect it from a tight end. So we got a Bears team that they're uh, he's on the Bears that you probably can't even name three starting wide receivers on that team. So Cole Komet just seems like a really good Byron option. Pringle, Equinemius, St. Brown. Son of a bitch. Dante Pettis. Yeah, yes. that's who I had. There you go. It's not easy. It was so hard. Yeah. <laughs> also, last time they played the Lions, finished as the tight end one. Yeah, and the Lions are also a team that gives up the fifth most fantasy points to the tight end position. So there's just a lot of things here that are in uh, Cole Komet's favor. So I love him this week. Probably the tight end, too. The tight end, too? Yeah, behind Kelsey. Uh, behind Kelsey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I honestly don't hate it. Like, I think his upside is wildly high this week. I'm going to go with a guy who I don't feel great about. I'm kind of diving deep into the garbage bin of tight ends, but I'm going to go with Tyler Conklin. A lot of the same sentiment of, you know, Mike White being back, Seahawks defense just being atrocious. Hasn't really put together any weeks that would make me feel good about starting him, but I don't know. Like, let's, here let's, we are. Here we are. <laughs> let's play roulette. Yeah. yeah, let's just play roulette. May, fuck it. Maybe he finds the end zones. The Seahawks have led up the fifth most touchdowns to tight ends, the most yards, like, if you can't get it done this week, then I've been swindled by Tyler Conklin all year long. It's probably a CJ Uzama week, but... Hundo. Yeah. So, I went with Taysom Hill at tight end 10, and I'm looking back at his game logs. And, I mean, there were the reports that came out a couple weeks ago that are like, they're going to start getting Taysom Hill a lot more involved. And uh, if you look at three weeks ago, dude, it's so difficult to get his game logs together because they don't put passing, receiving, and rushing all together, so you have to get it from, like, multiple sites uh three weeks ago he had three for 35 and a touchdown through the air and 10 rushing yards two weeks ago he went seven for 30 on the ground but also had 80 yards and a passing touchdown last week he ran the ball nine times for 56 yards and a touchdown so they are involving him one a lot more on the ground which is what I feel safest with with him in terms of like the tight end position but he's throwing it catching it and running the ball at a super high volume right now. And I think they just came out and told us, they're like, we want to use Taysom Hill more because everybody else on our team stinks right now, and they're doing it. So I'm just, when they when they tell us who they are and what they're doing, I just choose to believe them right now. And I think uh, I think it just makes sense with if him at tight end 10. Um, it's an easy start for me, even though the Eagles are like a good defense. I don't, I don't really care. Taysom Hill's not a guy that I'm like fading because of a defense just because he's just such a weird fucking player. He, he has more upside than... Almost every other tight end outside of like Kelsey and and he just scores a touchdown like every week. You just like have him. no idea how it's going to happen. Yeah, Taysom Hill's a great tight end option. Feels like every week. All right, so we've got Cole Komet, Tyler Conklin, Taysom Hill at tight end. Let's do some defensive streamers that are currently outside of the top eight as per ECR. I will start with the Jaguars. The Jaguars are playing against Houston. The Houston Texans have allowed the second most fantasy points to defenses against them on the year. The Jaguars are actually, uh, like, for as bad of a team as they've had for stretches throughout the year, they are number seven in terms of fantasy defenses, just scoring overall. Their last three games, they've had 12 points, 12 points, and 14 points. So that's a legit difference maker in your lineup. And in each of those three games, they've had at least three sacks, which tells you that they're getting quarterback pressure, and they've had at least one interception in all three games. So this defense rocking right now, great matchup, getting pressure, uh, making turnovers happen. So I think the Jaguars are one of the sneakiest good streaming defenses that you could find most likely on your waiver wire. Yeah, they're just a hot team right now. They're they're so hot. It's unfortunate that it took them this long to fucking figure it out because they could have dominated the South. They could have probably can they still they can still they get still in. Win. They're, well, they're yeah. in first place right now. They're in first place. Yeah. No, I don't think they technically are. Yeah, they are. Well, they have a tied record with the t- Titans, right? No, they have the tiebreaker over them, I believe. No, they lost to the Titans earlier. Am I wrong on this again? I believe so. The Titans are uh, not in the playoff right now. The playoff picture has the Jaguars. Okay. Well, then they... Jaguars beat the Titans. Yeah, Jaguars okay. are first in the AFC South. Well, either way, the South is in the AFC is coming down to Week 18, who wins that game between the Titans and the Jags. I know that for factual. Well... That well, depends on what happens this week. If they're ahead no, already... this week does not matter for either of them. I mean... How does that make sense? It's not true. Because it, it, you can play it out either way, where the Jags lose, Titans win. It still comes down to Week 18. They're but ahead to hit. But if the Jags win... What's more likely to happen? Like the Jags win against Houston, pretty likely to happen. Tennessee okay. plays without 
Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill. Right. So there'll Good be one. They lose. There'll be one game up, but then they play the Titans. If the Titans win Week 18, I don't know why, but I the they, they have that tiebreaker because the tiebreaker goes to the Titans. Assume. Yes. Why would they have? <clears throat> they probably have more uh, division wins, like against the division opponents. The Titans, all, all the Titans been, were hot in the beginning. Right. All I've been hearing is that this week literally does not matter for either of those that teams. That makes sense. It, yeah. com- it all comes down to week 18 for both of them. I don't believe it for a second. Well, that is true. Yeah, because they're both 7 and 8 right now. So You got a defense? I do have a defense. Let's go to the New York Giants playing against the Indianapolis Colts. Giants playing against the Colts. The Colts' offense has been absolutely terrible. Just last week, Nick Foles through three interceptions, so that's, you know, six points right there for your defense. And they gave up seven sacks. Nick Foles was just getting his ass kicked in the backfield. So I'm expecting a very similar type of a scenario to happen again where the Giants will probably, you'll, you'll see that defense probably keep their 10 points that they start with. I would say maybe even finish with a little more. But um, I'm expecting a very strong performance from the Giants who are a win and in playoff team right now. So this isn't like a, a game where they're going to come out soft and, and, and flat, they're going to come out ready to play, get to, get into the playoffs because they haven't been in a long time, and that defense is going to play their fucking asses off. It's a good I call. I don't know if Nick Foles was just, like, trying to shake off rust and wasn't used to playing actual football in a long time, but it felt like he was taking sacks before pressure was even there against the Chargers. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, shit, they're going to blitz. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, 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 was, it was almost like he tucked the ball and was, like, prepared for a hit, like, three seconds before anybody even got to him. He went yeah. Brock Purdy mode. He went straight mobile. That doesn't make any sense. It does. He's a run first. It doesn't make sense when you say it either. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Fuck Sorry. you guys. <laughs> Sit on it. All right. My defense, Carolina Panthers. Against the Bucks, give me them. Bucks offense is absolutely atrocious. They can't get anything going. Panthers have a they've they've got playmakers on that side of the ball, all right? Mm-hmm. And uh there there's nothing exciting about this Bucks offense. They they struggle to score twice. I think the baseline for the Panthers is really high. I'm so off the Buccaneers. This is an angry start. This I, is- I like the f- Tom Brady's basically been throwing an interception every single week, so you can almost chalk that up as like, yeah, they're going to probably get a pick. Right. Now, I don't know what that means, but and just trying to help you. Also, this is for the division. This right here, Panthers versus Bucks. So, it, to me, Panthers seem like that team that uh, is, is rolling right now, coming off a, a nice win against the Lions. Meanwhile, Bucks feel like they're the team that's like, oh, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up. So they're going to fuck it up. So while I would never make the start, the last time they did play, Carolina won 21 to 3. Yeah. But I don't see that happening again. I mean, yeah, why? Like, uh, yeah. Bucks, Bucks are worse than they were earlier in the season. Panthers are getting yeah, warmed up. Part of me just still has this belief in Tom Brady to get it together at some point. And like, this is the game. I'm, I'm Every over, game is the game. I've been over Tom Brady since like. Since, like, since I'm just, 2004. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if he's like 55. I'm just not going to start a defense against Tom Brady. When playoffs are on the line, they're literally so bad, though. Yeah, for sure. But it's just, there's there's too many uh, outliers and factors involved here for me to just confidently take the Panthers against Tom Brady. But Panthers, hey, you do you. The Panthers are my best bet of the week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said two weeks ago. I know. I wasn't wrong. I was early. That's they what, beat the shit gambling, out of the Lions. That's what you call wrong. Yeah. No, it's not. We call early. I, I've literally never been wrong. I've just to been being early. wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that will wrap up. Ranks of Stank for Week 17, Championship Week. Uh, maybe we'll be back for next week, depending on how many of y'all have Week 18 matchups. Maybe we just won't show up. I don't fucking know. So this might be your last chance to hear me tell you to go to Pristine Auction, use promo code BDGE when you sign up, and you're freely entered into the raffle to get this Nick Chubb signed. Beautiful helmets. Anything else? Good luck to you if you are uh, fortunate enough to be in your fantasy championship. I wish you all the luck because uh, I want to see you guys win because I don't. I don't win, so I want to see you win. You in any championship matchups? No, nah, I miss. I lost in the semis in the two leagues. Hate to see it. just happens every year. I'm always a contender, but never the contender. What do you got? Fade the feudal against Maz. Coming for that ass, Maz. I hope you win that one. I'm, Why? Rooting, I'm rooting for you. The brand no, needs it. Liar. What do you mean? What did you say? The brand needs it. The brand needs a big time. I'm in a Yahoo Pro <laughs> championship. Man, it doesn't that. count. It doesn't count if you know no one. Yeah, I mean, that's the beautiful. I like playing against people that I don't know. It's beautiful. They don't take all your players. I could do whatever I want, yeah. yeah. Plus, that one's pretty good money. Um, no, I'm, I'm rooting for you because I just, you know, I'm a big fan of um, what you do. I'm talking about the Panthers and Brock Purdy and all that stuff. <laughs> big fan of your work. <laughs> big, fan, big fan of your work. 
I'm literally undefeated. <laughs> Bang! Get the fuck up out of here. <laughs>